So today I'm going to talk about a few of the different things I've learned as a snake owner in the last couple of years. This is Queen Elizabeth, my speckled king snake. She'll be my co-host today. So this isn't really an exclusive list, of course, there are a lot more than just 10 things that I've learned in the last two years. But with that being said, these are 10 things that you may have not heard about before or some different ideas that maybe aren't so common. So number 10, I'll talk about how to help snakes shed. When I first started growing my collection, I always used aspen. Aspen can be okay, especially if it's just temporary, but I prefer to go bioactive. When I had my snakes on aspen, they would shed in pieces. I had to get shed ease. I used this stuff pretty often because they didn't always shed in one piece. Now it's not an issue at all. Ever since I started going bioactive with my enclosures, I've seen a big difference in how well my snakes shed. All 18 of my snakes shed in one complete piece every time. And that just is better for everybody. It's better for the snake, it creates less anxiety, for the snake owner. And it just creates a healthier environment for your snake whenever that humidity is just right. Using a soil mix a lot of the times can retain a lot more moisture compared to aspen or something that's more dry. Usually with a bioactive setup like this you're also going to have plants and isopods and those plants need water so you'll be spraying them every day or every few days or however often the plants need water. That extra humidity and those humidity spikes are more natural and they really help the snakes shed. Usually my mixture contains around 60% soil, 20% sand, and 20% moss, or 60% soil, 20% sand, and 20% clay, depending on the species. The number nine thing I'll talk about is kind of a weird one. So I discovered recently that when I'm changing my snake's water, if I actually dump the old water onto the plants, it seems to help them grow. I don't know if this is just from the bacteria, it has to have some kind of beneficial bacteria or something that's really helping, but my plants started thriving once I started doing this. If you know anything about this, let me know in the comments, but it's definitely seemed to work for me. The number eight thing that I'll talk about, and this might be the most important one, is don't use hides that could potentially be dangerous for your animal. When I first started growing my collection, I thought it might be interesting to create different structures with PVC pipe and fittings. But if you're going to do this, you need to make sure that the PVC is actually a lot bigger than the biggest your snake will get. I've had a couple of scares with this. I had one snake that did get stuck in the PVC and I had to cut the PVC off of it. Now, as embarrassing as it is, that is something that happened. And I want you to make sure this doesn't happen to you. I took all of the PVC out of all of my enclosures. And if you do decide to use it, that's fine, but just make sure it's going to be a lot bigger on that inside diameter than the biggest that your snake will get. Also, I do not recommend using hides that you normally would find in a fish aquarium. A lot of the hides that you would put in a fish tank can be pretty sharp and dangerous for these animals. And if they get stuck and try to wedge themselves in or out of that, it can definitely harm them. So for number seven, I have discovered that really burying my hides makes the snake feel more secure. And actually I see my snakes come out more often if they do feel like they have that secure hide to go to. If you have a half log, for example, just really try to bury it, put the dirt all around it, and create just a big enough of a space for the snake to get into the hide and out of it. You could do this just on one end of the hide or on both, and usually the snake will kind of create its own path. So what I would recommend doing is adding soil or leaves to the front or the back of the openings. You can even add more soil to the inside of the hide. You want the hide to be big enough for the animal to get in, for the animal to feel snug, but I also push it down into the soil so that there's not a big gap between the top of the hide and the soil. Another thing I've learned as a snake owner is that water changes should probably be done more than once a week. Now I would say once a week is the bare minimum. That's what I used to do. There were a few times where I probably even went two weeks without changing the water. I don't recommend this at all. Recently I've been changing my snake water every three to four days. To have the most fresh water for your snakes, you could change it every day. The water starts to get bacteria in it and it gets kind of slimy and the water bowls get slimy and you can tell that it just needs change more often than once every week or two. Usually I see my snakes drinking water most often whenever the water's been changed within the last two hours. So this just goes to show that they do prefer 
fresh water. I mean, think about what they would be finding in the wild, different areas where the water is not exactly stagnant. But I've also seen my snakes drink water when it's been changed the day before, two days before, maybe even three days before. But usually after about a week, that's when it starts getting kind of grimy. The number five random thing that I'll talk about here is you have to make adjustments to your temperatures in your house. So throughout the year you either have the heat on or the cool. You might turn it from 72 to 74 or from 74 back to 72. You have to make sure that you're adjusting the heat in your enclosures along with this. I highly recommend getting a temperature gun and checking the temperatures in your enclosures every time you make an adjustment to your thermostat. That way it's not getting too hot or too cold for your animal. Number four thing I'll mention that I've learned is toss the heat mats. In the natural world, in a snake's natural environment, they won't have a heat mat. Their source of heat will come from the sun. So I highly recommend using a halogen. If you need supplemental heat, you can use a ceramic heat emitter, or you can use a deep heat projector. And if you have a bigger snake, you might need more than one dome and more than one light. There are just so many things that can go wrong with the heat mat. I was just recently talking to somebody who had a heat mat that got way too hot. It cracked the enclosure and their snake actually got out. This can happen if you have the probe on the inside or on the outside and it comes loose and the heat mat just keeps running. For number three, you really want to pay attention to the individual animal and not just the species. Of course, you want to look up the species natural environment where they're actually from and adjust your humidity and your temperature settings based off that. With that being said, I have four corn snakes and they're all a little bit different. Some enjoy certain hides that some others don't. Some of my corn snakes like to come out more at night and some come out during the day. So I might need a ceramic heat emitter, a deep heat projector, or a radiant heat panel that I put on during the night for a few hours so that they have that heat at night because some of my corn snakes will not come out during the day, so they're not using that heat. If you are gonna do this, I would just recommend turning it off for a few hours at night. Have your timer on to where it shuts off from, I don't know, maybe midnight until five. So it's not on all throughout the night, but they do have a few hours to get warm because some animals feel more safe in the dark and that's when they'll utilize the heat. I will also say if your snake seems like it's pretty shy, especially if it's younger, that may change. Just recently, one of my corn snakes, who is about two or three years old now, started coming out way more often throughout the day. For number two, and I know I touched on this a little bit already, but do a lot of research on where your snake is actually from and what the environment and the weather is like in that area. A Florida king snake, for example, would come from Florida and there's pretty high humidity in that area. So you wanna research climate and the weather in Florida and for that specific animal rather than just general snake guides. A lot of care guides will suggest 40 to 60% humidity, which may be fine, but if you look up where a Florida king snake is from and what the average humidity is, it's gonna be higher than that. And the number one thing, and these aren't in any particular order, so this isn't the most important thing, and there are many other things that I could talk about here, but the number one thing I have on my list is providing climbing opportunities and providing enrichment. Usually about once a month, I like to take away or add certain things to my enclosures so it's more interesting for the animal. I mean, think about what they're doing in the wild. They have all kinds of opportunities for climbing, burrowing, and checking out new things. If, if you have the same things in the enclosure for five years, that's kind of boring. I like to keep my snakes in enclosures that are at least the length of what the snake will be as an adult. This not only gives the animal the opportunity to actually stretch out and have plenty of space, they could always have more, but it also adds the opportunity to add more unique pieces of enrichment. So thank you guys for watching this video. These are just 10 things that I've done to improve my snake husbandry. Let me know some ideas you have for how you change your snake husbandry and how you help your snakes live a better life. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.